So the topic for today is the muscular system. Um, of course, that in the post, I explain a lot of uh, the details regarding the muscular system. But even though I don't want to get in the specifics of the biological aspects of this system, but I would like to go into the conceptual aspect of this system. To begin with the muscular system, I just want to talk about the etymology of the word muscle, because when we say muscle, we usually think about strong and potential and strength, but it is so funny and so tender to see that muscle really means little mouse little mouse so it's it's funny because in latin muso is mouse and ulo is tiny so musulo muscle is tiny mouse i think that is good to know funny to know because the for the latin people in their cultures it was a common way to call the muscles like this because when you move the muscles it seems like it behind if uh, under the skin there's like a tiny rat a tiny mouse that is moving from one side to another so that's why they call it like this musculo funny to know the muscular system is very important for the body to keep the temperature to hold all the organs to make a structure for it to be still but mainly this system is about movement. So the important part of this system is movement. Hmm? Why the movement? How the movement begins in life? We have to remember that in the first uh, structures of life, the first um, unicellular beings, even if they are prokaryote or eukaryote, uh, eukaryote they will be unicellular beings that are moved by the outside so the environment they lived in water they live in the oceans in the seas in the rivers so these main uh, beings the main, these main cells they are moved by the environment from one side to another so they depend on the tides and because of this sometimes the tides and also the the, the currents of the water take them away from their source of food, from their source of light or heat. So this is why some of them had to evolve in order to move again to their source of nutrients. The prokaryote uh, cells, usually they extended part of their skin to create like a tiny tail that moves in spiral. So it allows them to move back to the places or to move towards the places of food or light. So this is how this main cells starts to move in the space, deciding where to go. The eukaryote cells, they will be much more complex. They start to divide and to specify different cells that are able to move the entire structure so they could reach, um, they could reach the the spots of nutrients or light so that's how, how we can have for example the um, the jellyfish <laughs> the jellyfish like one of the first beings on having this movement of the cells allowing them to move in the space okay this is the beginning of the muscle system which is the movement so of course that through thousands of years of evolution many beings started to design different ways of movement until some of them created, some animals created the bones. Through the bones, the muscles started to specify in different uh, structures, in different ways. So it uh, divided into many uh, specified um, uh, muscles until, for example, a human that can have 650 muscles in our bodies allowing us to move a very complex structure so the fascinating way in which we can understand 
how they move because something that we take as as known something that we take as as common in our days like talking like moving the hands uh walking doing everything that we do normally with our bodies we don't usually think about how complex and specific it is every one of the movements because the way in which we are able to move the the, the body is because the cells of the muscles they are made of proteins of two kind of proteins that they contract or extend according to electrical pulses those electrical pulses are received through the nervous system so the nerves sends a signal of electricity like if you are doing like this to something you see that that electricity contracts the the bodies the the things so they are sending tiny little signals of electricity that contracts or extend these proteins which makes that the muscles can contract or extend the entire muscle so when you contract the muscle the tendons they pull the bones so you can move it so the reason why you move everything is basically because of electricity from your brain pushing every moment every instant by electrical pulses each one of the cells in your muscles it is amazing if you think about it it's incredible how the brain receives the signal from the five uh, senses it interpretates the entire environment and from that like a computer it sends precisely to each cell of the body what to move in which direction which with which strength we have to do it so it's incredible that something that we don't even think about needs so much energy and electricity all the time so it's it's amazing it's incredible so we have nerve system neurons that are telling our body our muscles what to do every time all the time the brain is saying to the muscles what to do how to move and everything so we have three kinds of muscles the first one are the smooth the smooth muscle system the um, uh, myocardium which is the heart and the stria that is the one related to the skeleton the first one the smooth is the one that is surrounding the um, the organs inside they they push the organs to make the digestion to to do all the things that we cannot control that uh, you don't have the will to control it as the myocardium which is the heart that it's beating 60 to 100 times per minute so they move constantly and we don't have any control with our mind upon them so they are uh, muscles that work by themselves receiving the signals from our brain and then the third one the stria the skeleton one is the main structure is the whole structure that we have that we know as muscle and that we can control in our movement the one that we are able to to control somehow hmm? for sure we can think that it's amazing how the heart can be moved by itself and you don't have to control it but for me what it's much more incredible is how you can with your own mind decide what to do with the movement of your hands to decide this that i am doing here how the pulses of my brain are telling exactly which movement and how to do it to my hand this is incredible this is so fascinating that just electrical pulses can precisely tell the muscles how to move in which strength is incredible so i know that this is sometimes that we don't really think about these are moments like this when you think about it in a philosophical way or maybe taking drugs there's the, the only two ways in which you can <laughs> feel so wonderful uh, uh, amused by 
by by this movement. But I guess it's important to to have this realization of how perfect is this machine that we live in, that we are. But now, besides this, I wanted to take these concepts into the um, mental idea of uh, the universe and how we live in our life normally as a civilization. So when we think about the Earth, for example, as a living being, we can understand that every living being that is inside the Earth is like a cell within that body. So if we try to find the muscle system in our body, the Earth, we will find that between the 40 to the 50% of the weight of the cells of this body are the muscles. Between the 40 and the 50% of our cells are in our flesh, in our muscles. So is the weight, almost 50% of our weight is muscles. Think about that half percent of all the living beings in this planet are related to the muscle system. So if we think about the muscle system being every cell in our body, in, our, in the body of the earth, we can think that half of the living beings in the planet are beings that, like the muscles, are just contracting or expanding, creating movement. But they cannot know, not even decide, where to move to or why they are moving. Because those decisions are taken by a tiny group of cells that we call the neurons. So almost the 50% of the living beings of the planet are moving because the 5% of the cells of the body are telling them where to and why. So we can understand here that exactly as our body is a fractalization of the universe, so inside of our body, in Earth and the entire universe, we have around 50% of our structure that all these beings that are part of the muscular system of the reality are just contracting and expanding, generation, energy, heat, movement, but not being able to decide why and where to. When we take this concept into our society, we can relate that maybe all of us, these cells that we are living here, we are like muscles, muscle cells that are controlled by 1% of cells that decides and know what to do, and we are just controlled by them. For sure that the people that is here, a few of you, can relate this with many videos in YouTube about conspiracy theories that says that we are all being oppressed by the 1% of people that is in charge and yeah so think about it isn't this exactly as the muscle system called by the neurons think about this in our cultures of humanity we are looking for freedom and we say we want to set ourselves free that we don't want them to be controlling us so we are fighting to release this power to set ourselves free. But it would be a problem. Because when we do that, suddenly the muscles don't know what to do. They fall down. They don't have strength. They cannot work anymore. So we die. We cannot move. Let's do this exercise. Think that you are a cell in the body, in your muscles. You are a cell in muscles. And you are moving, you are generating energy, but because you are receiving a signal, an electrical pulse from the 
neurons. Uh, suddenly, some of the cells in the muscle start to say, hey, we are not living our lives as we would like to because we are being controlled by the nerve system. So every one of the cells in the body starts to say, we have to set ourselves free from the nervous system. We have to cut it. We have to set ourselves free from this. Mm -hmm. So what is the option? If the brain is the one ruling and, they, and we in the body say, the ones from above are controlling the ones below because they are in the head. So we have to cut the connection with them. We have to get away from them and release this power. So do you know how to disconnect them? The way you disconnect the brain with the muscles is through here in the atlas. It's a hit here like this that disconnects the cerebellum behind with the spine. So when you disconnect this, all the body is free from the nerve system, but you also can't move anymore. You're a vegetal. You can do anything. You don't have any pulse. You cannot move. Think about that for a moment. And let's talk about it. So here we arrive to the concept of the mistake that we usually do which is very understandable with the money, with the concept of money. When we see this system, we start to ask ourselves, why, how can we get rid of this system of oppression and control? And, and the reality is that we cannot, because the system works like this in the entire universe, it works like that. So it's not the system, the problem. The problem is who is ruling the system. It's not about get rid of that 101%. It's about who is in charge of that 1%. Okay? So this is exactly the same mistake we do with money. A lot of people say the problem of humanity is money. No. Money doesn't have any problem. The problem is the value and the expectation that we put in money. It's not the money. It's what we believe about money, the problem. The same thing happened with that 1% of humanity. It's not a problem, that 1%. The problem is what are they doing with that 1%, okay? So the conflict that we have here is not that there is a 1% ruling, is that we started to think about everything separated. We as humanity divided the entire body, saying that this is your problem, this is my problem. So we started to divide the whole thing, giving the responsibility of something to someone else, believing that we don't have anything to do with that action. So the brain start, start to think about just the brain, the, the, the muscles think only about the muscles, like if we are not part of the same thing. When we start to think that we are part of something and that what I am doing is a part of the whole, so I know that I cannot do all the tasks by myself, that I need a team. And we start to work as one, working for the whole thing. So um, important to see in this way, we are a team. Biology teaches that we are a team, that every part of the cells, um, every cell, every organ is unique in its own way, but they are all working for the entire thing. And not because they are equal, because they respect the integrity of each one of them. I know my potential, so I can expand myself and make the others grow with myself, with me. So we are all one growing in our own uh, potential. What we do in our society is blaming someone for something that is wrong. 
and we start to fight in the in the same system we have to see this as a team while we perceive our social body as something that is separated from one thing to another we will still have all these conflicts i would recommend you i would invite you to make this reflection of the topic conspiracy theories all these conspiracies that makes us think about there are a percentage of humanity that is controlling the rest of us and i would recommend you to stop thinking into conspiracies blaming another ones for something that is happening to us to stop thinking that there is someone that controls us and people that is control and question ourselves behind this fight and think as the muscular system in the system there is always someone that will guide and someone that will be guide and put the strength to move but if these two don't trust each other we have a problem so it's not about a fight between the ones that feel themselves control and the ones that think that control it's about to recognize what can i do with my own inner potential and strength and from that how can i manage to help the people i trust to be in that one person and i will tell you something here for you to be kind of calm we will never reach the perfect system is impossible because homeostasis the process of balance of harmony is something that we need to manage every day it's not that you reach the perfect thing and suddenly you say oh that's it and you don't do anything else is something that we have to transform every day. Imagine that you are looking for perfection and you found this perfection in a song. You find the song, this music, and you have the perfect harmony. And it's so perfect that suddenly it became silence because you don't have a story to tell. You don't have anything to move. So suddenly you were looking for the best song and you found silence. What do we do? Can you get now that the reality is basically as muscles with neurons and they need to work together in order to find the balance that if we are wondering for a system of balance where only the muscle cells control everything that's called death and silence. In this life, for sure, we are not going to be able to see the result of the awakening. We are a humanity that are in the process of awakening. So we are still asleep, trying to wake up, trying to transform ourselves. So don't expect to leave the perfection in this life, but at least put everything that you have into see at least one neuron waking up. In the meantime, as a muscle would say, let's work on it. The vibration for today is Ku. The statement for today is I am a channel between paths. The code today is the immunologic system. This system is our main defense. It's the group of cells and molecules that create organism and, proce and processes able to keep homeostasis. This means the equilibrium in all the parts of the body by protecting it from external threats like virus, bacteria, chemical, and even from internal th threats like cancer. Mainly it's found in the lymph or dissolved in water, in the blood, even though it can also be located in certain organs. It's adaptive. This means that improves when it receives new threats. It's found distributed throughout the entire body, protecting it constantly. Sit comfortable, close your eyes, and take a deep breath. 
concentrating in your breathing. I take a deep breath and become aware of the body I inhabit. I take a deep breath and slowly I start to extend the body, stretching each part of it, moving every joint slowly in circles, becoming aware of movements, the extension of every muscle. caressing the body and becoming aware of each part of it. I yawn, releasing all the energy. With the tip of my fingers, I start to carry and massage softly in circles from up and down, from one side to another. Every muscle from the forehead around the face the jaw, lips, neck, the back, chest, arms, fingers, until the tip of the toes. Try to feel every muscle that you can, becoming aware of them. And I, I make a soft massage to each part of the body. I feel the sensations, the pleasure, the pain. recognize which parts are in tone, which ones are weak, I identify which ones are in tension, pressing much more deeper.
I take all the time that I need to speak in this way with the muscular system. Stretch all the body, honoring and thanking each one of the cells of my muscular system. I recognize that me, myself, with other millions of cells, we are part of the muscles of Earth. And I honor myself and honor all the other cells around me. I recognize that I am moved by the electrical pulse that I receive from my higher self, from the spirit that I am. And I honor these neurons that move me forward to the destiny to the movement of my action. I recognize that I am the impulse. I am this electricity, the neuron. And I am also 
the muscle and recognizing the power, the potential that I am is that I can connect with the potential that guides me. I unify this neuron and this cell. recognize that I am the channel that connects the path of the neurons with the muscles. I am the channel between paths. I am the channel between paths. I am the channel between paths. I have, I have, I have. I take a deep breath and each one at its own time come back here and now. And those who are following the task for this month, you take the energy, put it into the water, and pour it on the seeds that we have sowed. Thank you, everybody, for being here another day. And see you tomorrow at the same time, as always. <laughs>